So it's all the time. That's a long way of me answering no, no, no. that so it is how, all the time. How, so how does the physical act of breathing help us to keep, you know, that language of breath that you talk, yeah. about, talk about, how does that help us to stay? Because it's really grounded, isn't it? When those two connect, it's basically a feeling of being grounded and mm -hmm. uh, sort of secure within ourselves. So how does the physical act of breathing and how we use it help us in that way? Yeah, it, it, the physical act of breathing, it's a, it's a, it is a physio-psychological act. So every breath that you take is connected to your psychology, so your emotional state. Every breath that you take is connected to your physiology. And it's something that, you know, when you start to think about it, you start to control it. But it's something that also, if you're not thinking about it, the unconscious part of you controls it, right? So it it's this nexus, it's this connection. So when we use conscious breathing, we are using our nervous system, using the autonomic nervous system specifically as a mechanism to send a message to the unconscious. So let's, I, I'll even put it very simply, and then we can expound on that. Sometimes I say, if you want to be calm, breathe like you would if you were calm, right? If you think about when you're just sitting there, and I assume unless someone's, you know, with us tonight, uh, and they're running away from a, a lion, which maybe you have a, a more exciting life than I do. Yeah, you right? don't know you're... our how-to academy audience. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But maybe, maybe, okay, you're sitting there, you're reading a book, you're listening to a podcast. How would you normally breathe? Well, typically we would be breathing probably pretty slow. It would not be labored. It would be if we're using our a functional breath pattern, which is what our nervous system looks for, it's always it's always observing how are we breathing to give it cues as far as are we in danger or are we not in danger? So you're probably breathing low and slow, probably breathing through your nose. All of these things are signals. They're all things that the nervous system picks up. And it says, okay, these the, the evidence that I've been able to find based off of all the things that I'm taking in indicates that based off of our breathing, we're safe. So what happens is the unconscious you will activate the parasympathetic nervous system. And when that happens, we become more relaxed. Our heart rate comes down, our blood sugar comes down, our blood circulation goes to our, our digestive organs, our reproductive organs, and we can relax, we can recover, our hormones change. There's an enormous amount of, of change that we experience physically because once it re that unconscious part of you receives that signal, it says, okay, cool, I, I'll, I'll change the physiology because now we're safe. If, if you pick up a signal that, okay, now it's dangerous, right? And, and you can do that with your breathing. If you're running from that wildebeest right now, so this, this is that person in the audience who, again, reach out, I wanna know your life, <laughs> but you're probably breathing heavy, right? If you've ever seen a person and they're they're about to get into a fight or if if they're running away from a dangerous thing, right? They're probably breathing up in their chest, probably mouth breathing. These are all signals that are picked up. Our nervous system is always watching and it informs us, that other part of us, that unconscious part of us, as to what our threat level is. And the unconscious makes those physiological changes accordingly. And so with the language of breath, we can learn how to observe. It always starts with awareness, right? We want to observe how is it that I'm feeling right now? And the unconscious is going to speak in emotions, in sensations, in physiological things. Like for instance, your heart rate. It's one of those things. If you're a runner, a lot of times a person will check where your heart rate is. Well, we want to check our heart rate. Are we actually pushing ourselves when our heart rate is elevated? It's generally a signal, hey, great, we're in that sympathetic dominant state. Sometimes we call that an active state. Sometimes we oversimplify it and say fight or flight. But basically it means, hey, great, our, our organism, the unconscious is saying, let's, let's be active. Let's, let's run. Let's do things. That's great. Now, after you get done running, you want that heart rate to come down so you can start relaxing. But it's 
there's all kinds of research that shows a lot of times we do a workout and unless we do some kind of breathing protocol after that workout, we stay in that heightened state and we reduce our ability to recover. So one of the things that you, you might do, of course, as you're breathing, you want to do functional breathing, but after an act, a workout, maybe you would do a breathing protocol to downregulate your nervous system so that you, your unconscious says, oh, hey, I guess we're, we're done being active. It's time to go and be into that relaxed, that recovery state. And so this is never not happening. It's always happening. What, what would that Whether look like, that um, down, that yeah. time between? The, the, the time between? Uh, exercise and sort of the more the more powerful breath and then uh, telling, regulating it so that you make the most of it. Because it's really interesting. You said basically, otherwise you might not make the most of your exercise if you yeah. don't consciously. Hmm. That's right. So when I train athletes, one of the biggest things is, okay, we want to work out really hard. So you want to really rev up the, the engines and then you want to be able to recover as long as you can. You want to maximize that recovery time. So some of the signals that we're going to send, we want to send it with proper breath mechanics. So we teach a person how to, in this case, we're going to breathe a functional breath. So a lot of times we're just breathing up here in the chest and maybe we're mouth breathing. So we would learn, okay, we're going to breathe in through the nose. We're going to expand the lower lobes. So we're going to expand in the belly and the ribs and the chest, and we're going to relax the exhale out. So a simple, a simple thing that a lot of people, we mess this signal up. We, we want to send a message to the unconscious to relax. So people say, Hey, just take a deep breath, right? Just take a deep breath. And what happens is we'll go, ah, right. And you end up sending a more stress signal than you meant than you were originally. So what happens is your nervous system picks up shoulder breathing, chest breathing, and mouth breathing, right? When it does that, it says, wow, we must be breathing up into the chest. We only do that when we're running away from a predator or when we're charging a hill. I guess it's time to activate more. And so we become more activated as opposed to relaxing. So to take a deep breath, let's learn how to take a deep breath on How To Academy today. So to take a deep breath, what we're going to do is I want you to find your belly button. Okay. So if you find your belly button and then just measure down two fingers below your belly button and then save that spot and just imagine that you could put a marble in the center of your abdomen from that spot. Okay. That is where the breath should start. It's as if you're blowing that marble up from the size of a marble to a softball. And it should expand in every direction, down there, down in the tummy. Then the ribs are going to come into play. They're going to expand outward. And only after those two things happen, then the chest is going to expand. Then you're going to relax the exhale out nice and slow. Okay. And this is how we take a deep breath to send a message. We're going to relax. All of the physiology is going to hear that. So belly ribs, chest, and then you can just let it out. Now you can let it out through your mouth or your, your nose. You want to inhale through your nose and just relax it out as long as you can. That is how we send that message to the unconscious. Let's relax. Let's calm down. And the beautiful thing is when you do it that way, because you have to understand your nervous system you know, the unconscious you is using your nervous system to say, well, where are we breathing? How fast are we breathing? And it's observing all of this. And so what we want to do is, is use the right tone and inflection. That's what we call it in language of breath. So if a person says, calm down, right? And they're just screaming at you, yeah, obviously it's not going to work. I mean, you can try it if you want to, but it's just not going to work. <laughs> but if a person uses the proper tone, something that's calming, something, you know, calm down. It's okay. Right. There's a difference. And this is something we really focus on in the book, uh, language of breath, because oftentimes it's, it's not the words that you say, right. If you, if anybody's been ever been in a relationship, you've heard, it's not what you said, it's how you said it. And so it's the same with breathing. If you're going to take a deep breath, it matters how you take that deep breath. If you're going to do a breathing technique, it matters how you take that breathing 
technique. And so we focus on how that is going to enhance the message to the nervous system, you know, through the nervous system to the unconscious parts of you. Let's relax. Let's calm down. You're safer than you think you are. It's okay. And when you do that, you can start to take actions. You're less afraid. You're coming from a far more aligned position because your unconscious is not trying to, to, it says, okay, I guess you don't need so much energy to run and fight. I guess you're just at a social gathering. Yes, you're excited because you're with friends. And yes, that's, that's you, you're you going to have some higher level of awareness, but you don't need to be able to run away or fight. Okay, we can downregulate that a little bit and put you in a really comfortable place. So that same technique to take you out of exercise into a normal day to make sure that most of it is is presumably the same tech technique to relax you in a state of kind of overwhelm and also to help you go to sleep which is when a lot of people really need to be relaxed it's the same thing that you do feel that marble fill it up that's right and what happens is if you're really activated man you know you've maybe you some someone really scared you or you just got in a car accident or Maybe you just did high intensity interval training or something like that, man, you're breathing pretty heavy. And so what we try to do for, if, if, for, if you're trying to do this, you, you start where you are, you, you want to become aware. Okay. Where am I unconscious right now? It's breathing heavy. Okay. I can't really do incredibly slow breathing comfortably at that point. It really wouldn't work that well. But what I can do is I can start lengthening my exhales. I can breathe functionally lengthening the exhales and over time the unconscious is saying huh seems as though this breathing is speaking some safety I, i'm going to relax i'm going to calm down a little bit and then before you know it you're breathing in nice and slow you're exhaling nice and slow a typical cadence that we would shoot for in this kind of case would be in for four seconds out for eight seconds and so you're doubling so it's a ratio of one to two inhale to exhale but if you're really scared, that's going to be really hard. So, hey, just do your best. Breathe in. Lengthen it as long as you can. Oh, man, I'm really, I'm still really scared. Okay, that's fine. We're just going to calm that nervous system down. Breathe in. And just relax it out nice and slow. And do it just as slow as you can. And then eventually you're going to calm down enough that you are doing maybe a more regimented technique. The techniques sometimes... Like I say in the book, you know, sometimes we look at ourselves like we're a, like a machine and we want to type in magic codes, you know, mm -hmm. some kind of secret code. Breathing techniques aren't really like that because we're not really a machine, right? We're a relationship between these two parts of ourselves, a conscious and an unconscious part of you. And so you, as the conscious thinking part of you, you're taking conscious control of your breathing and you're just saying, hey, relax. Just relax, just relax. And this part of you is all, hey, but are you sure? Are we, are you sure we okay? Are we okay? And then you're just, hey, it's okay. I'm, I, I'm the critical thinking part. The unconscious you is not critical thinking. It does a lot of amazing processes very quickly, uh, but it's always jumping to conclusions. And we know that sadly enough, we have a negativity bias. And that's part of what's kept our species alive if you see a uh, a stick in the forest and uh you know a part of you might say oh that's a snake right so so the unconscious part of you picks up the pattern and it says that could be a snake well it might not be a snake but if it is it's better that you recoil and that you get really oh my gosh you know activate it and then it's only after you've taken that action that you can consciously start saying is it a, is that really a snake and so that's how it is with just about everything in life. And, you know, we don't, I don't know, again, maybe your listeners are tangling with snakes a lot, but we have these other snakes in life, right? We will react oftentimes with a negativity bias. That's our unconscious reaction trying to protect us. But then we have to think, am I really in an amazing danger right now? Is it really life or death? And even if it, even if like there is some real threat, I, I need to be able to relax a little bit more so I can concentrate and I can critically think about that. And I can say, well, I need to let my other half know. I need to let this part of me that's trying to help me to survive. I need to 
tell it to calm down. So, okay, I'm going to do some breathing techniques specifically in that moment. And I'm going to tell it to calm down. And actually but, n- n- being yeah. aware of um, our negativity bias is very helpful because it helps us to be more reasonable with ourselves. Just to, just to say in that moment of fear, you know, actually you're, you're wired to think the worst and it's not always, it's not always the worst. 